Oh, what am I talking about? I don't know. All right, directions. Let's talk about directions. What we gotta do to get these photos taken. <laughs> Hey Classic, welcome back to another class today. We're going more into light painting again. This is a series, check out the other videos. All right, so first off, I got this idea off of a, fa a Facebook group of several art people I hang out with. So I want to first say thank you to Miss A because uh, she's the one, it was a, it was a middle school teacher. Uh, she threw this out there as a, can somebody get, give me some tips on light painting? And I was like, I would love to make a video on that because uh, this was so much fun. So. Thank you for making that, uh, for throwing that out there because that that's, this is fun. So, wanted to get that out there first. So, today, light painting. Let's go over the directions on how to create with lights. Now, for today's lesson, you need some gear to take care of your photographs, but don't worry, you don't necessarily need a DSLR. But if you got one of these, awesome. The painting, the light paintings that I was working on, I was doing it with my phone. I've got an iPhone 8. Uh, that I use and there are several apps in the app store and we're going to touch base on the, on those apps today uh, a little bit. I got another video I'm going to do kind of a little deeper dive into the apps themselves. But the three things that we're going to cover today is we're going to go over the directions on how to take light photography, testing because you got to test it even if you got all the directions down. And last time we're, last thing we're going to do is talk about playtime, getting out there and playing around. Two components that you need for light painting is the camera, something that you're going to take the image with and a light. Now the light source that you're using can vary widely. I've got headlamps. I've got these. Uh, these I love these ones. These are these. And but that's all you need: the camera and the light. You're good to go. Now things to dress up the experience and make it a lot easier is a tripod with a camera mount. Make sure that you can stabilize the camera because this is going to be a long-term exposure. You're going to need to make sure that that camera is holding dead still during the photographic process. You can even take a couple binder clips, put the binder clip on the side of it and use a little feet as a stand. Uh, personally, I'm kind of issue on that just because I'm putting a, a spring object on glass and I don't feel safe with that. However, just pop in my camera, good to go. Um, tripod helps make things a lot easier, makes things still. If you have gels, which is the clear transparency things that makes your gives a little bit of color to your uh to your piece you could totally use gels uh tissue paper again works just fine i mentioned that in another video if you're using a dslr an intervalometer really helps out uh if your camera doesn't automatically do it i've got to use the plug and play intervalometer works just fine what we're doing with that is creating a long-term exposure we're now keep forcing the shutter to stay open longer to let light penetrate inside the chip and penetrate the uh, the sensor. You're expanding the amount of time that light can enter into the sensor. All right, so the basic directions for light photography are very, very simple. It's gotta be dark. So once you're in the dark and there's no extra light around, once you've, 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 got, a, you've got a dark space, then you can set up the space of how far you need to be away from the camera. Take a couple test shots to figure out, are you far enough away so that when you are moving around and moving the light around that you're gonna be fully in frame. So find a dark space, no lights at all. We're talking pitch black as as dark as you possibly can get. If you're doing this in the backyard, like I'm doing, I was shooting in my backyard, um, wait until about an hour after sunset. Uh, that gives you past nautical twilight and um, you have sunset, twilight, nautical twilight, and then night. It's technical. So wait about an hour after the sun has set and then you'll have true dark. It doesn't get any darker after that. It's going to be that way the whole night unless somebody has a rave and lights are going off uh, two neighborhoods over and there's spotlights. It's happened. So once it's dark, then you're going to go ahead and set up your gear. Now me, I use milk crates for most of my stuff. I've actually when I use milk crates. If we were, if I was, you know, a professional here, I would use an apple box. Uh, because those are what we use, but I have milk crates and they do the exact same thing for me. So uh, take a milk crate out in the backyard, pop my tripod on it just so I get a little bit of height and uh, go ahead and fire up the app, figure out how far your distance needs to be. And then you're just going to start working on the test phase at this. Point. So once you've fired up the apps or intervalometer on your camera, however you're doing that long exposure, that, uh, that does vary. Then we're going to get into the testing phase. Now the testing phase is by far the most crucial to getting proper light photography done. Uh, 
basics are if you have any manual settings on your camera uh, all manual settings try and make it you want to make it to where your aperture is receiving the least amount of light at a time so that you can have the most amount of time to it make that image uh, your ISO should be 100 or less some cameras go to like 50 or 80 ISO so if you can get that awesome if you can't 100 is just fine uh, aperture the aperture the ring of how much light is going inside of the lens of that camera you want to try and make it the mid-range not all the way at the top so I recommend anywhere between uh, an f8 all the way up to about an f12 the reason I don't go beyond that is because once you start getting higher up it is changing the focal distance of where that image is being captured and you want to be in that kind of sweet spot of like the infinity range where you're not going to be too close and you're out of focus too far back you're out of focus and you have to be in that kind of sweet spot that uh f8 to f12 gives you kind of that perfect grade um if you can go ahead and take an image of that while you're in that phase if you can take an image then to guarantee that you're in focus that's also good so you don't have to deal with uh, manual focus because if it's moving at the same time you are going to get movement in the in the camera and that's going to change how crystal clear that image is so ISO, aperture, and uh, and it's in focus somewhat. That's awesome. After that, um, me for my settings. If you have on your on your camera here, instead of changing it to M for manual, change it to B for bulb, and that is going to make it to where the intervalometer holds that shutter open the whole time. If you don't have an intervalometer and you can just set it to where you're taking a 10 to 15 second exposure that's plenty of time too uh will you be able to write a full sentence of words no because you need you need time to do that uh but you'll have enough time to take a good range of motion in your in your image of getting the light in there um and it works great now if you were dealing with an app definitely take a couple runs at doing some test shots where you're moving the, the light around to make sure that your light trails are being picked up accurately inside of that app uh the one that i liked the most was the app that i liked the most was slow slow camera it worked great for me it definitely took some getting used to. i need to make sure make sure that my uh sensitivity was relatively high or low um so that i can make sure that my it, it's kind of like the jitter the way that the the light was moving through the frame that's kind of what that picked up on so go through the app look at the different settings uh is it auto saving to the camera i didn't figure that out until night two so make sure that you're you're saving the, all the images that you do so you can make sure that you get the best option um on your capture mode make sure that you're you're selecting the right thing which is you're trying to pick light trails you're trying to do uh, like an extreme night photography now if you want to get into the specifics of that we can do that in another video but you know iso basics for this if you're dealing with this um you're dealing with the sensitivity of the light coming into the camera 100 is usually used for a bright super sunny day because your shutter speed there's so much light out there that it's going to capture into the sensor and the sensor's preparing to where it's going to take that light in a lot slower whereas if i do 400 i'm using using i'm usually using iso 400 if i'm shooting indoors uh 400 to 1200 depending on where what setting i'm in and then evening time if i'm and then evening time if i'm in like a cafe where there's like this dimmer lighting it's much more subdued candles are lit something like that 16 up 3200 you're gonna use that for light sensitivity so you can get a better image the problem is as you go up you're gonna also involve grain into your image now this is up for debate because you can structure your shutter speed your focal length your aperture to minimize the amount of grain even at a high iso it's possible but that gets that's like way more advanced stuff that uh, we'll do later on if you guys want to now, after you've done all these test shots and you know you are in the clear, let's go have fun. Now it's playtime. Get out there, experiment, test, uh, make weird shapes, make weird designs. Because why? That's how we learn. We learn through making, start off with something so our, un our understanding is how do we get to this next part. And then m augmenting that, changing it up, making it much more creative. One of the things that I was I, I would definitely want to play in more is as I'm seeing the light change in the image, I'm actually starting to see the light 
moving through the screen? How can I minimize the amount of glow? How can I change the directional pattern of when it starts to glow out? Am I getting the glow in a certain direction? Can I change these things? Experiment, play. It, that's, the, that's half the fun of making these things. Awesome class. I, I, I love doing this kind of stuff. It's much more creative. It fills you up inside. It, it takes care of that, that spot where it's like, I want to make something. What's something I can make? And it's not a painting or a piece of clay anymore. It's doing something else that's in the realm of both of those where I'm sculpting in space, but I'm also painting and using light as the paint now. That's just weird, but it's so cool for me. So Let's take care of our homework as we always do, which is don't forget to like, subscribe, share. I do have more videos in this series. Do check them all out. Uh, if you guys had a question at any time today, raise your hand down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, later guys.